Information and Management of the Spotted Lanternfly. The spotted lanternfly is native to northern China. It was first detected as an exotic and invasive species uh, in South Korea in 2004 and has since rapidly spread to different parts of that country as well as areas of Japan, Taiwan, and Vietnam. It was first detected in North America in 2014 in Berks, Montgomery, and Chester counties in eastern Pennsylvania. In the past five years, it has rapidly spread to areas of New York, Delaware, New Jersey, Maryland, and now Virginia. Since the spotted lanternfly has limited mobility, it spreads primarily by human-assisted travel. They do so by laying their eggs on host trees or other smooth structures such as metal tanks, wood posts, bricks, stones, concrete walls, fences, and cars. These materials are often transported between states, furthering its distribution. Residents of quarantined areas are urged to check their vehicles and or any outdoor items they are moving for the spotted lanternfly egg masses to avoid distributing the pest further. This shows a quarantined area of eastern Pennsylvania. Common hosts of the pests include fruit, ornamental, and woody trees, as well as grapevines. Nymphs can be found on over 70 different species, including willow, maple, poplar, and pine. But favorites to the pest include apples, hops, and grapevines, which are all highly important to the agricultural and tourism industries of Northern Virginia and other at-risk areas of the Northeast. Adults can be found on Alanthus altissima, better known as tree of heaven, a non-native tree. In the fall, adults prefer to feed and mate on the species compared to other plants. The spotted lanternfly will lay eggs on any smooth trunk tree, stone, or vertical smooth surface, including man-made items like vehicles, campers, yard furniture, farm equipment, or other items stored outside. The egg masses contain 30 to 50 eggs covered in a muddy gray waxy deposit and will overwinter from about October to mid-May. A nymph passes through several immature stages or instars. In the first instar, it is wingless and is black with white spots. This can be found between April and June. As it grows, it develops red patches, and this can be found from July to September. Beginning as early as the middle of July, the pest will take on a much different appearance. Adults at rest have a black head and grayish wings with black spots. When startled or flying, the spotted lanternfly will display hind wings that are red at the base and black at the tip with a white stripe dividing them. The red portion of the wing is also adorned with black spots. The abdomen is yellow with bands of black on the top and bottom. The insects will suck sap from stems and branches which can weaken and damage the plant. This feeding creates a sticky sugary residue called honeydew which they excrete. This attracts other insects and promotes the growth of a thick layer of sooty mold which can further damage the plant and or surrounding objects such as patio furniture and cars. Because of this damage, the spotted lanternfly is a major threat to the wine, apple, stone fruit, and logging industries. The wine industry alone accounts for at least $1.4 billion annually to Virginia's economy. The impacts of the spotted lanternfly on the thousands of acres of vineyards in Northern Virginia could drop tourism and employment rates dramatically. Tree bands are adhesive paper bands that are placed around high-risk trees, usually the tree of heaven, to capture the pest as they ascend and congregate on the trunk. Tree bands are routinely removed and disposed of to kill the pest. This system catches mainly nymphs but can also kill beneficial insects such as ladybugs, bees, and spiders. Insecticides are also an option. The Penn State Extension currently is researching which insecticides are best, but preliminary results show that these active ingredients are most effective. Here at Donegan's Tree Service, we believe it is best to create a plan now before the infestation hits our area. We have a proposed strategy to control this infestation before it reaches large properties, such as wineries and orchards. We plan to strategically cull the female tree of heaven species and keep only a few select male tree of heaven species on the outskirts of the property to act as trap trees. This is shown as the green dots on this example map. 
We will apply tree bands to these trapped trees as an effort to keep this pest out of the property and off of the more valuable plants. This is also a good source of monitoring the spread of the insect over time. We have concluded that about two trees on the perimeter of a property for every five acres of land is a good start for this plan. If something isn't delivered to better control this pest, I feel like we are on the verge of another pesticide toxic syndrome. The latest in the fungus that is attacking them is that there are at least three universities working together developing a serum for application. It's not a matter of if, but when.